Thank you. So we're going to get started tonight by first of all setting up our user account. So once we've logged in, Tom, what do we do? Yep, off to, to set up your user account, which yes and no, it's obvious, but it's not quite obvious. The little human on the uh, top left will get you into editing your own profile. Okay. So that right. clicks on it. This is all that ever came to him from when I set him up. First name, last name, and email. And now I know why it wasn't recognizing me as a user when I was trying to do my pat. I was typing in David Donaldson, not David Student. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Hey. So what, what so. is critical over here is make sure it has at least one phone number. It won't let you out if, if it doesn't. So complete that one with the name, address, et cetera. Anything that's got an asterisk needs to get done before you save. Okay. Can and we I get that? The Can we get rid of that here. recording thing in front of the screen there? You click Just click OK. Or click I got it, I think is the. Yeah. Uh, it says continue or leave meeting. Continue. Thank you. That's right. OK. That should be Cloud Street. <laughs> oh, we're getting too good. <laughs> There we go. No bell fountain was a city. <laughs> and what's important about this as well is it's what I will use to set up your account in QuickBooks to get some pennies out of you every now and then. So if, if the user was under the age of um, is it 16 or 8? 16. The, oh, so it's not, it's not going to like me being born yesterday, is what you're saying? Um, well, <laughs> be, 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 be born yesterday quickly, and oh. you'll see that the guardian at the bottom comes up. Oh. 20, 20, well, uh, it should come up because that's the only thing that's true. Oh, 08. Uh, oh, dash 08. Oh, you can use the little there calendar as well. There's a guardian. And this is this is what happens for when you're under the age of consent. Born You've yesterday. got guardian's name in there and the profile. So David, just change your date back a couple of years. And we will we'll be good with that. Yeah, I'll go with 2000 because that was a that was a fun year to be born. There we go. Yeah, April, young, yeah, that works. Young guns. Sure. April first. There we go. Okay, so no, 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 notice the garden is gone. So with this part correct, you can click save on the bottom right hand corner. It's going to ask you to read through your terms and conditions of membership. So we'll just uh, pause for an hour while I read it. Okay, good. Yep, then accept that. And I believe saved again. Oh, so oh, okay. what else you see on this page is firstly in the bottom left hand corner, the membership agreement which has automatically been brought to your attention. It's the same thing, but this is actually one that really needs to be signed on the web. So we have to make a couple of changes on that website because this is the only one that's actually real anymore. So I just go through all of that, read it carefully, etc., and sign it off. What's your middle name, Dave? Gregory. Hmm. What's yours? Ray. Is that your father's name? My grandfather. Who stands to fill in on that, David? I think you, you, you could just drop it halfway through. Okay. So we put in the email address. Oh, no, I'm, I'm almost there. No, you're not. <laughs> This this waiver is also the waiver that the website will bug you about signing every single year. Hmm. So this is invalid. Okay. Does not match. Oh, look at that. I misspelled it. Got a capital D there. 
like on song. There you go. It doesn't care about capitalization. Oh, okay. oh maybe it does. Mm. Hmm. It doesn't match. There we go. Really? What? It's picky. <laughs> One or more problems exist. I think you need to click that sign, click the sign there. There we go. You're almost done. An email has been sent to. Your Please email address. Line. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my email now. And that's just the final part of essentially a two-step verification. Okay. So that all done, you can return back to the portal itself. Okay. Bottom, go down to the bottom. There's some interesting things across the bottom of that portal. There is an SOP test, the Glider P Star test. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there are various aircraft tests. So before you fly the Crosno Solo, you must have gone through that, or the, the, the manuals of the Crosno and written the test. Okay. There's an option so to change password. So, so let's just talk about what these mean to people. SOP test, who fills this in and when do they do this? SOP test needs to be filled in at the beginning of the year. So you should read the club's SOPs, then go and complete this quiz and uh, it'll log that you've done it. And I think it's every two years repeated. That every you have year. To do. Is it every year on the every, SOP? Every spring. Okay, then the SOP every spring, as, as Dave says, and the P star test is every two years. Hmm. So we need stars every two years. That was that's a pre-solo test. That's only for students. Yeah, who are but, but, but the reason it's put in every two years is a reminder for the stuff that you're not used to using. So everybody just gets a refresher. And it does tell you how you do. So you can go back. <clears throat> so it tells you which ones you got wrong. Okay. Yeah. The idea here is less of a test and more of a reminder. So it's like when moving a glider, okay, so I should remain on the south side of the field. I submit my answers. Ooh, my, my, I'm improving. So you can actually, if you're having difficulty with it, it's not a, oh, you failed, we kick you out. Or you got to start completely over. So it's, it's actually a pretty, pretty, friendly way to do it. P star, I believe, is in the same manner. Yeah, the P, the P star test you do before you go solo, but as I said, it, it's very good to go through it every every two years or so, because not being a power pilot, you forget half of the stuff that's in okay. there. And we've got a test and an aircraft five. Yeah, I'm, I'm still waiting for the K-21s um, test to come into to code into the so okay. test an aircraft five ignore okay question, question about the glider p star test is yeah. it 100 percent as well as the usop yeah both 100 percent, but you can work them both to 100 percent. okay and that tells you it indicates where you've gone wrong if you mm -hmm. yeah okay mm -hmm. yeah so, so so much like the other one yeah okay not going to let me submit until I do them all. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So as we, we were last on the aircraft test, David, if you wouldn't mind opening, just say a Crosno test. Looks exactly the same. Sa same thing. So with all these quizzes, tests, whatever you want to call them, you're going to have to find the answer somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we've left you with a spot on the same same website to find that, and that's on the left hand rail under documents. Mm -hmm. And we will return to documents once uh, once uh, we finished with the other one, which is needed to see that. So can you go back one screen there? Okay, so you'll see on the left hand rail of that inside panel, there's SAC information, there's privacy information. SAC information will generally be filled in for you once you've paid with dates and everything put in there. Um, privacy information is more to the point. Here you can allow or disallow any form of email, notification from the club, whatever you like. If you're sick and tired of receiving your licenses out of date, 
switch it off here, it won't bother you. Uh, it'll also, the, the upper section of sharing profile was set there to help people do ride shares. You can decide whether you want to share which city you're in, whether you want to share a phone number or an email, and that you that that, that, that I'll show you a bit later where you'll see all of that. So if, as I say, if anything is getting too much, turn off what you don't want. <laughs> Roger is allowed for everything to be turned off. So now I'm, yeah. I'm going to do a shout out to these features. Personally, I really like them because, um, you know, your medical is good for five years. You know, unless you're actually going and checking that, it's, you know, you can forget. So, you know, your Transport Canada booklet, when is it going to expire? Um, your aviation medical, when is it going to expire? So this is an automated reminder. So you don't have to worry as much about those things and it'll, it'll help catch stuff that you may, may have missed. But again, it's in your control. So you decide what you want to do. We should put a field in there for your passport. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> FAI badges on, on, on that rail. Yes, when you've completed them, it's state completed, et cetera, et cetera. Those are all the initial stepping stones to going cross country. Um, then we get to aviation information. This is when you've been issued either an aviation document from Transport Canada a license or a student license, which is further down. Um, that will get completed there, the expiry dates. This is what David was talking about earlier on that is notifying you about your medical exam date, expiry date, instructor rating if you are an instructor. So this is just a place for us as a club to know what, what your numbers are, and et cetera, and it'll help you as a reminder. The next one down is club information. Oh, and you'll notice you've got a calculate button. Yes, you're right. So if you've got your issued button here and you click on this, it automatically calculates when it will expire based on the issuance because this one's a 10 a 10 um, ten year medical expiry. So if I have my medical this year, calculate, it's good for five years. So there's some really nice tools here to help you do this data entry. All right, on to club information. This will just literally tell you when last things were done, when last you logged on, updated your profile, SOPs were passed, etc. Just a bunch of information. And here's the step into the membership agreement. So if you've forgotten what the heck you signed, yep, exactly. you can go and Thank do you. that. Mm -hmm. uh, file uploads. Okay, so once you're licensed, it's rather nice for us to have a copy of what your license looks like, etc. The pages of your gliding logbook, etc. And here you can upload images of that. So your medical, your license page, your Transport Canada opening name page right at the bottom. If you're flying from the field in your own aircraft, we need a copy of your private uh, liability insurance. Um, if you're a tow pilot, you'd be requested to put in your power logbook, last couple of pages, etc. So we can enter these like via an attachment from our this phone? This is simply an attachment from your phone. It should be any file that you can upload. Okay. And it just, it just makes it very easy. If anybody calls, we have it all there. We actually have something that looks like something. Just, just, just to chime in a little bit, um, there is a mobile version of this site. If you visit it on your phone, it's slightly different, doesn't have all the capabilities, but it does let you do things like take a picture and upload it from your phone. Okay, so that, that satisfies you, Jim. We should, we should thank our programmer for that. That's a smart idea. Yeah, yeah big shout out to Roger Spall. Roger thank you, spent Roger Spall. many, many hours on this one, many. Okay, flight hours is the last tab in that rail. 
And this, uh, we haven't really used it, but it is useful to be able to just put last year's hours in your grand total. And those are your records. Oh, as well. I can't do decimals. No, we don't care about decimals. <laughs> this is last, last year's hours. Is that what this is? Yeah, the previous yeah. year's hours, yeah. exactly. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it helps with currency checks, etc. So, yes, now we've run through everything there on the profile page. It's now, Roger, there. quick check. If yeah. we make an edit on any one of these pages, so for example, if I go into here and I make some entries, do I need to hit save before going to the next page? Uh, no, you can save them all together. So, so I, can, I can move around all of these, putting in different things, and then eventually hit save. Yes. All okay. right, thank you. Okay. So that being that, that's your profile page. Let's have a look at what's on the, on the left rail in on the side where the calendar is. And let's just go down to the bottom of that first to just tie it into the SOP tests, et cetera, et cetera. Down there is a bunch of um, links. More important ones to talk about firstly is documents. David, if you could click on documents. In here are all documents related to flying at Great Lakes, uh, related to the the company itself, all aircraft manual, everything else. If you are looking for standard operating procedures, click up and go to standard operating procedures. And you've got the club standard operating procedures. You can download it. You've got the tow plane standard operating procedures. They're all downloads. This is what you're gonna go through before you write that SOP test. And then of course, refer back to it if you don't remember. The whole idea of all these quizzes is have to read through the information and at least retain some, so that'll be good. Um, also, as you see, that the, the, there's more, more documents in there that we can honestly talk about a little bit later, but you've got your, you've got your manuals there, you've got your standard operating procedure, it all, it's all there. I mean, if you look at the, the, the Crosno ones, there'll be manuals in there as well. There's even the maintenance manual if you need to refer to it. And of course, a manual for the radio. Please, please read these. And this can all be done ahead of time so that you at least have a good understanding of how the radio works in there, how the variometer works in there ahead of time. Then then there are no quizzes for that type of thing, but the information is there. I grabbed the wrong one. Oops. I meant to grab the radio main. Ecker, there it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. radio manual yeah. is, is quite fun. Now there are two different radios yep. in the club aircraft. There's the three, what is that? The three four three three two oh one. Three two oh one. Four four two oh one as well, I believe. Yeah. Which is in the other aircraft. And the main thing you want to be looking at here is operational functions. Because you know, to look at general transceiver data and you know receiver specifications this is some very technical stuff so sift through and read the stuff that makes sense and is applicable to you and what you're doing like how to dial in a frequency would be really good you know what to happen if a frequency disappears on you mm -hmm. the bigger one is how to change the squelch yes and, and that as well uh, so just going down the 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 left hand rail again I just have a funny feeling Dave Bradley doesn't know the link to the meeting. Stand by one moment. I'm just going to quickly forward him the link and I'll be with you. Must be on Newfoundland time. Oh God, I can't even get <laughs> out of there. We go. Be nice. So while, while I have doing that. While Tom is doing that, does anyone have any questions? All right, Dave just called me. I told him you're sending in the link. Okay. Does anyone have any questions of what we've gone over so far? Is this clear as mud? Okay. So before okay. we get started, you're going to do your profile up in that upper corner, put in your personal information, work through all of these tabs, put in as much information as you can. Don't forget to hit save. Do your membership agreement, do your SOP test, do your PSTAR test, 
And if you are flying solo or as pilot in command, you want to complete the appropriate aircraft test. Okay. Okay. Tom? Okay. So back to information on the left hand rail. You've got what's happening at the top there, which is literally a calendar of the entire year ahead of you and behind you. Always opens on the day that you're on. So we can go. Let, let, let's say we might be fly. Oh, notice Dave's gone forward. We're in July. Look at all those booked off days in July. Well, what's going on there? Click on the day. Now, not much is happening over there other than Tad has seen this and he signed himself up. Oh my gosh, he's an eager. So, no, no, notice Every what day. Tad, Tad did there. He signed himself up as a student pilot. So, most of you will sign up as a student pilot as well. Now, the reason those things, the, the dates are greened out on the side is that something has been put on this page. It doesn't matter which, in, in, in which area. No, but there is something called events over there. So if you look at events, it's flying week. Two people have signed up for it already. Wow. So you know in advance what's happening. I mean, David, I think you can go to the end of, end of May. There's an event there. <gasps> so. It's our opening event, Food of the World. Oh, South African something. Sausages, et cetera. You got it. You got it. Right. So, so <laughs> how do we I also sign up do for award this, Tom? Very easy. You click on the little icon on the top right. Little green guy. Little yeah. green guy. You sign up. Ooh. And if, it, if it's a event like a food event, note what you're bringing. Just wow. make a note, David's bringing squeaky cheese or whatever. Pavlova. <laughs> Pavlova. Pavlova. The classic New Zealand dish. So on top of all of this, on the specific day where there's going to be a serious party in the evening, there are also activities. So Dave, if you could click on the activities page. Where's the activities page? Just to the left, left of, of events. Ah, the activities. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. This is what drives the club in all aspects. This screen drives emails to people when their they, they help is needed. So for you guys as a student, come in and sign up. The only place you can sign up is where it's green. Sign up as a student. So we know you're there. That sign up is going to trigger an email to tow pilots, and to instruct us to say, somebody signed up, we need your help. So very important, if you don't sign up, nobody knows something is happening. Now, you'll also see there are a couple of those fields that have a little green icon on the side, which is what you may sign up for. But we said right in the beginning, we need timekeepers, we need field managers, people to run the wing, and occasionally the washroom needs cleaning. Um, COVID tracing, you can sign up if you want to for now. At, at the moment, we decided to keep it there in case things change. But the last two years, it was important that you signed up there as well. So has the club officially changed its COVID protocols or at this point, are we still tracking? Are we still COVID tracing? I believe we are not from the last meeting. Okay. Uh, is there any way to unsign? Yes, there is. You see, there's a big slash through the poor, poor, okay. poor human. That's Thank how you, you unsign. Okay. And, and if you hover, Tomic, you see that when I hover, I get a little help prompt. Thank you. Yeah. And on, on any, say there was more written in the comment over there, you'd see the entire comment. You can click on there and put a comment in. I will only be in at X amount of time. Yep. or whatever you know so we've got some idea of what's what's running because for all of the all of these days we need at least two instructors and a minimum of two tow pilots because i you know I, I i may sign up for a week two weeks ahead and then something happens and you un unsign yeah now when instructors sign up they'll sign up for how many students they feel like handling um currently it's set for two we might just increase it don't worry if if you signed up and try to sign up as a student and suddenly a new block appears below it that says uh, students waiting. 
Hmm. Well, you are waitlisted right now. Yeah, all right. Sorry, it is waitlisted right now. You're right. Thanks, thanks, Roger, because no instructors are signed up. Um, if I went to that same day, which is what, April the how many is? May, May 28th. 20, I'll just, just go on my side here to May 28th. Yeah, while time is doing that, as an instructor, I receive an email that says, we have X students waitlisted for Saturday as a little nudge reminder. So, so I get there and I see Harry's just signed up as well. So I sign myself up, but I say, I'm only gonna deal with one student. No, we'll and see Connor. what, okay. <laughs> okay, so now see what's happened on your screen, David, if you refresh it. You can also refresh with the button in the right corner. Yes. This, this button? Yeah. yeah. Which one? There we go. That the one. one that says refresh, top right corner. So this is the classic situation of students that are already in and students waitlisted, because I decided I'm only going to take one student. Woohoo! <laughs> so just to show you how that works. So at um, this point, you need to call Tom up and bribe him to take two more students <laughs> so all these other boxes below like check flights solo students will all become apparent and sign upable as you progress through learning how to glide you get to solo status you come come in next year and you need a check ride because you've been flying solo or you got licensed all of that will be ready to go so good, that's, good news that's... Harry. You're, you're you're now up i'm i'm, I'm tapping out <laughs> yay Oh wait, where the weather's going to be good. I'm back so, here. Where the wing run is? Uh, where do we? Uh, log okay, in? so 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 what we have here is we have field managers and we have timekeepers. Now this 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 person, David student, has the option of both. He's already signed up as a timekeeper. Wing runners, etc., are field managers, yeah. or they they manage that operation yeah. on the field itself, and it, we'll lightly browse over it later. Yeah. Everything is explained <laughs> in the SOP. Yeah, but everyone we, on everyone on the field is expected to help run the operation. So the field manager is going to be more of a director position to say, okay, who's up next? You know, what's the lineup? Hey, Nancy, and I'm going to call you Nancy because your, your name is actually showing as Nancy right now. Okay. Um, hey, Nancy, you're up in two flights, you know, go do your walk around. Let's, let's get going. Right. That type of thing. Now, as someone who walks out to, you know, hook you up, I'm going to be your wing runner. Typically it's actually not the field manager because they're busy with their other tasks. Um, as much as possible, but that's more of a everyone does it as opposed to it's a specific. Yeah, so uh, the reason why I asked uh, Nancy's my mother, by the way, um, uh, the reason why, <laughs> I, and I don't know how did that happen. Um, the reason why I asked is that as a student, I mean, I'll you know I put myself up for a student flight, but then I'm available. Hey, I'll run wings. So I was just wondering if I had to go and log in and and, and notify of that too. But hey, I'm I'm there, so I might as well put, make myself useful. Absolutely. Yes, so, so, so put yourself down there for the, that you'll take those positions. It really indicates you're going to be all day, that they're all day, and um, help run the organization. Now, so Marco, you will find that uh, as a student, you do get to run lots of wings and, and, and things like that. There's, there's never a question of finding a wing runner. Yeah, uh, I, I spent a lot of my life actually going to the club only to run wings and not even fly. Okay. Yeah. And, and to that point, Marco, um, it is possible for you to sign up as a field manager and or timekeeper without signing up as a pilot. So if you actually plan to come out, maybe you're feeling a little under the weather, um, you know, and you just, you know what, I'll come out and lend a hand. Then you can absolutely do that. And that's more than welcome. So there, there are some times when it's like, you know what, I'm going to kind of kind of sit out from flying, but I'll, I'll, you know, help out. So there are, there are some folks who do that. So the system will allow you to do that. Okay. All righty, so back to the left-hand rail over there. Um, you, David's already shown you, you can spool through the months at the top there to see what's coming up ahead. You guys would all have, all have received an invitation for any of those events. Because the minute an event is created, it gets sent out to everybody. And then as the event gets closer to the date, it sends out Hey, reminder, you are signed up for this event or you are not signed up for this event. I think it's four days out and two days out and then enough is enough. 
Um, so two, okay. two, it's two weeks, one week, two days. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> you coded it. <laughs> so going going down on the the left hand rail, notice there's two warnings over there. Let's have a look at the warnings. Da, da, da. I had not attended the safety seminar. Yeah, David has not attended the safety seminar. David, I love your so... wording here, Roger. Never. You have never. Oh, <laughs> this this is because no date is is found. It'll change when there's a date there. It'll say you you're over the year limit or something. Your last one, yeah. Well, yeah. This is this is the first time round. You have never, I've you've never, never, and never. this is the other one. Successfully <laughs> completed the SOPs. Very important. Oh, Go through them before you come to the field. Question them when you're at the field. Ask the questions. And and FYI, these are the emails that get sent out on a Friday morning. I don't know why we chose Friday morning, but they get sent out uh, overnight. Thursday night, Friday morning, warning you about the same things. Okay. Uh, right, the next uh, Transportation Canada booklet. How do I get one? You, uh, you get one when you finally get your license. Um, okay, so as a student, I don't have to worry about it? As a student, you've got to worry about getting a student license and that we will get to you within the first, say, five or six flights. Uh, okay. Transport Canada uh, approved person representative is David Bradley, who's somewhere on this call or was on this call. Uh, you'll just talk to him, write out the license, we'll put the student license number in, take a scan of it, put it into the archives as well. Um, David, I believe I attended your um, meeting at a safety seminar, correct? That we had on the weekend? Yes, you, yes, you did. Yeah, you, you were there physically. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't complete it for you because we only signed you up two days ago, right? Okay. okay. So I will go back and then put those dates in there like I have to put a date in for Jim Miller as well. Right. right. And it's only admins that can put those dates in. So yep. any, any board member can do it and any instructor. T 20 bucks, right, Jim? That's what we agreed yep. on? 20 yeah, bucks? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the case of beer. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Now we're we talking. <laughs> All right. So after that is news items which are pretty stale at the moment because it was something that we did, but at least it's telling you a few things. If something really important is happening, we could put something in there. If the social media committee wants to put things in there, we can do that. So I, I leave that up to you guys. Very rarely used at the moment. There's also one discussion group underneath there. That's where Roger asks for, drop him a note if there's things that don't want to work or don't make sense to you or whatever and you want to you'd like to see something else and the, everything will be taken into consideration with uh, Roger looking at his time schedule <laughs> now underneath this 14 links links before, 14. before you go forward yeah under discussions there's a create oh. a new discussion what's that all about Absolutely. Just put your title in there, put your description for your discussion and um, restrict which uh, roles need to see it. David, I've never used this, so we're on the same page. <laughs> so this is a very, very good topic that uh, David's put in there, which can be very useful. You guys can go back in there and say what's what's good, what's bad. Now, look at the, restrict, the restrictions on there. So the audience is limited to these roles. Click on the plus button. Now, it's, if it's everybody, you don't do anything. But if it's restricted to only specific things, so let's say that this topic remains alive, David. Restricted to, just let it go out to everybody. And what is it? The, this is limited to plus any restricted roles. Roger, I'm not sure what's going on there. Oh, restricted members in restricted roles. I think we might have. Oh, you can actually limit the discussion to a particular member. Oh, so this is limited to a member. Yeah. So the moment I put it in, it's just Alan and I having a it's conversation. Just, just you and Alan having the conversation. Already. Let's let's do everyone who starts with A. It's going to send them an email that the conversation is. No, A begins with E. A? 
<laughs> so so that, that that will also invite Canadian, people. Eh? Okay, I need a joke of the week then. So just create that one, David, and it'll probably send an email to all of us. There's a new topic to discuss. Hmm. Um, Whoever this David student guy is. Okay, discussions. 14 links. Go. There's 14 oh, links. They are simply links. They are simply links to sites that we found of use. There are 14. And if somebody has a couple of others, send them along. We'll add them in. Below that, we get to members. And members is what you've decided to show from your profile to other members. So Kevin Bailey over there doesn't want to tell you he's in China. So he's not putting his in China. In. He's, he's there. He doesn't want to talk to anybody either. David Donaldson, the real one, has got all that information in there. How, how you can contact him. Send an email, etc. You can so, get so it. So these are straight from the link. Yeah. So if I click this, it throws me straight into my email, and I can now send an email to this David Donaldson guy and tell him what oh, for. Also on mobile, it will take you and phone the number as well. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. So this is and this is only members that have agreed to share. So if you want to remain anonymous, you're not going to be in there. Just turn it off. In fact, this one is one that you have to turn on. Um, okay, below that we get to documents, of course. And this is a repository of all documents which we did go through earlier on. Browse through them, find what's interesting. You know, the special, the, the uh, special procedures, etc., uh, which will be the SOPs and all of that. There are paperwork templates for Transport Canada. There's a lot of stuff in there over the years it's been put in. So and if you you're want to find... open them all, click on the icons in the top right corner. This one here? Yep. Oh, nice. That'll do everything for you. And, and you'll see there are some documents in here, like the letters of recommendation. So this is the letter that we use for a glider pilot. So when we're issuing the license, uh, we're issuing the recommendation to Transport Canada to issue a license, um, those types of things. So. You know, as you look through this, you'll see there are some things that might not be relevant to you and use a bit of common sense. Now, Tom, mm -hmm. um, the GLGC documents, this is all of our procedures and constitution and, you know, yes. the, the corporation, if you will. Yes. Special procedures. This was created for COVID, so it may or may not disappear. Mm -hmm. Licensing info. Um, this is, you know, our, our Transport Canada letters. Uh, you'll also find a copy of the P-STAR references in there, you know, language proficiency test. So th there's a number of documents to help you get your licensing done. Flight and ops manuals. So this is our manuals for the various aircraft, for the tow plane, the various electronics, the parachute manuals, et cetera. Now, tell us a little bit about the term points in airspace. Okay, so I mean, from from what you you might or might not know, we we live underneath the greater upside down wedding cake of Toronto Pearson. So we have a limit of how high we can go right above us, which is thirty five hundred feet above sea level, and then we have to move further north. Now, what you're seeing under turn points in airspace here are really files to be put into things like your UDI, navigation computer, XESOR, any of that stuff. That is what this little section is about. It's about the navigational toys. Okay. So the, air, the, the, air, the Canadian airspace is simply a text file that goes into either UDI or into XESOR and it literally displays the airspace above us. And so, for those of you who are not familiar with XESOR, um, if you have an old cell phone, keep it. You can get this software for free. You upload it and it is a moving map uh, navigation software specifically for gliders. And you can put in your glider performance. It'll help you with final guide calculations. You can put in your turn points if you're flying a particular task. It'll help you with the navigation of getting around those tasks. So for those of you who have been flying Condor, 
and you, you've got that little PDA down the side, this is what we're talking about. It's actually that device in the real airplane. Um, it can run on any Android device. Tom, you like to run it on a, um, a Kobo? A, I've, run, a Kobo? I've run it on Android. I've run it on Kobo. I've run it on, on a something similar to a Raspberry Pi, which has a different name. That's what's in the ASW19. So it, it, it runs well on all of those. We right. are planning to do a talk, Kerry and I, on just the use of all these PDAs and navigation devices, et cetera. Uh, part of, and also we have to talk about that in the official observers course. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's what those are for. Okay. Thank you. And then useful templates. Uh, Roger put something in there. <laughs> if ever you need a compass correction card, you can go and download the spreadsheet for it to print it. Now, when do you need a compass correction card? Every year. <laughs> Not 100% true. You, you need to swing the compass. But when do you need a compass correction card? Your annual? Well, it has well, to be no, there we, we, every time you fly. It's, it's very simple. It's when it's not correct. No, even if it all reads zero, even if there's no corrections, even if you have a compass that reads 100% true, you have to have the card. If the card is not in your, is not stuck on your instrument panel beside that, you're not legal. So we've just created a new task. I have all the card holders and cards and somebody can go and put them in the club mm -hmm. aircraft because I know they're not there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's I'm something- I'm surprised that uh, the annual didn't pick that up because uh, I know mm -hmm. Drew and I prepared one for Whiskey 5. Yeah. We just made up the numbers, but we prepared one. And we do have We do have a compass, Rose, if you want to swing. Yeah. Okay, following documents and all the useful things in there, we get to my flights. And this is where flights will be logged as you flying during the year. Now it may, I'm sorry to interrupt, it may at this point be worth logging on as somebody else and see some flights. Okay, I can do that because I can log out of here. Oh no, I think you can stay logged in. You could probably have stayed logged in and just opened a new tab. It has to be a different browser. Yeah, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll log out. So where do I log out here, Roger? How do I log out of this? You log out. The arrow. The get yeah, out of that's it. prison arrow. Yep, you there got it. Go. What do you mean no? Give me a second. Careful, we can see your screen. I know, look, that's why look, I moved it. That's why I moved look, it. Look, look up your black book, are you? <laughs> yeah. Now I got to remember my password for the black book. Because I got a password on that. All righty. Great Lakes. Isn't that a pair of scissors to cut the elastic band? Yeah. Well, it reminds me of an email that you sent many years ago of the original hands-free for cell phones. Do you remember this one, Tom? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I, know, I know, I can imagine what that one's about. I, I think you got that one in your head as well, Marco. <laughs> oh, look, you've changed your name. Okay, there we go. So this is David in the real life and you can actually stay in the real life now. Right. So, so now when I go <laughs> forward to Flying week. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go to that first one we did, which was here. <coughs> and I see that we have, oh, I thought we had more than one student waiting. You guys, you guys chickened out on me. So this is what it looks like from the instructor side. So I sign up, I'll take two students. And then now we have capacity for three students. So if we had more students signing up, you would no longer be on the wait list. But if you're on the wait list, come out. Yep. You will fly because it is on a standard rotational basis. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so, so that, that's the question I wanted to ask is um, um, multiple flights on that day. So it's, stri it's strictly on capacity. So Marco, if you come out early, let's say you, manage, <coughs> let's say you actually manage the impossible, which is to get 
a lazy ass tow pilot and a lazy ass instructor to get their lazy asses up and out early. <laughs> and, and you've got an aircraft that's rigged and cleaned and ready to roll sitting on the un- end of the runway at 10 o'clock and you're the only student there. I will happily sleep through three flights with you in a row. I mean, I mean, instruct with you for three flights in a row. So here's okay. the deal, Marco. I live about 12 minutes away from the field. I am usually there before nine o'clock in the morning. I don't think I've ever seen an instructor arrive at the field before 1030. Hey, excuse me. (laughs) I, I, and Ted, and Ted, may I wonder, ask how many times I had, had, had paint pancakes ready for you guys when you got there? Did I say arrive at the field or was already? <laughs> oh, at you the did. Field? You did. Okay, yes. you win. You win. <laughs> <laughs> I was careful. I recognize that Tom is uh, very often there. So are some, there are some instructors that are so devoted they sleep overnight on the field. That's right. How, on the how, hard floor in the clubhouse. How how sober and hungover he is in the morning. Well, that- <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always tell that, that by how eager he is to be instructing. Oh uh, yeah. Guys, ever get that people camping over? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You can pitch yeah. a tent. No problem. You can, you can pitch a tent. Drew has a, a trailer permanently on field, and there's always room on the clubhouse floor. Just All right. Out. So okay. we're just curious. Okay. And the green sofa. Okay. okay so my so flight. My flights. So David can show you something from last year. And that's what the logbook would look like. You oh, gotta hit the search I button. No, oh. I no, I went hit today again by mistake. Okay, you can type there, it we there go. as well. Yeah. So here's all my flights. And a feature that I really like is you can export to a CSV. Where's that mean? CSV is a comma separated values. It automatically opens in Excel. And what you have now is you have an Excel spreadsheet with all of your flights. And something that I do year over year, and I'll see if I can find one handy. Well, what's even better, Dave, now is you can do your proper pilot logs. Mm -hmm. I was getting there. (laughs) Give me a minute. Uh, Chug, chug, chug. So he's slower on on Zoom. So what I do is year over year, we do stats. So this is the entire club year. And we break it down by aircraft so that we can look at aircraft stats, how much each aircraft flew that year, as well as how much each, um, sorry, pilot stats I wanted to go to. We can actually see who did what for that year. So we can see how many dual and solo flights you had. And then we see what the total numbers are. Now, most club members do not have access to everyone's. So you'll just see your own, but you can also say, which aircraft did I fly? So how many flights did I do in in 5.9 last year? Let me search that. Oh, none. Oh man. All right, let's see what about what about VCN? Here's all my flights in VCN last year. Um, can I ask a question at this stage? There's a flight yeah, there dollars is one of forty-four dollars. Um, was that money you made for the club or was that money you paid? Okay, this is this is an estimate of what it costs you. And it literally is an estimate. It's not going to reflect exactly what um, QuickBooks is showing. This is something that Roger is still working on. So when David is flying as um, the instructor in command, he should not be, for a, for a student flight, he should not be charged. Now that flight over there is David flying with me as his check ride. That flight cost him that amount of money for his check, right? To be fair, these costs are fairly accurate. Yes, they are fairly accurate. They, they will change a little bit with the new costs that we're putting, putting out there. Yeah. And why the, why the difference from 97 to 44? How many minutes flight or 
this is the okay so, so so look look at the toe there it's a four thousand foot toe oh, which is going to cost you well into the h higher regions above the 50 and then it's the amount of time it's a 23 minute so that's the first check right of the season spin checks etc 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 it's very different from when you're flying all year round where you're pretty much current all the time here you're not current after six months of non-flight flight. <clears throat> um, getting away from all of that with all the information. One, one last comment on this, just on yep. the pricing, just to be absolutely certain. The website that we're looking at does not manage invoices. It doesn't manage the payments. That is all done through our treasurer right now, which is Tom. And that all comes out of QuickBooks and he spends the time um, every, on a monthly basis making sure that these flights are in QuickBooks so the bills come out correctly. This is just an estimate during the flying season just to give you some idea. It's fairly accurate, but it's the QuickBooks billing and the invoices that you receive every month. Those are the important ones. Yeah, it's it, that the, the, the QuickBooks is the record, um, the official record. record. This yeah. is this is more of a predictor estimate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that one? You'll get you'll get used to it. It works very nicely. And if if anybody finally starts helping us input the, the flight times, you'll see the other side of this is how to input it and all <clears> the data you see then. So let's go down to after my flights on the left rail leaderboard. Leaderboard is something I would like to implement and haven't implemented yet. So we set up a bunch of racetrack courses around Great Lakes, a 50k triangle is currently up and it's whoever flies it the fastest is at the top of the leaderboard. That's what Tom, this is where would from. I find the information about those tasks if I wanted they... to learn about them? <laughs> if you wanted to learn about them, you probably have to look somewhere in XE saw, not XE saw in the Condor site. It's not out in paper yet. Okay. It, it, it is not. The tasks are created. The tasks are created and they'll be in CU on the club computer. So okay. you can see them all there. The tasks are there, but information is not there. Okay. Uh, next, you get to web camera. Well, that allows you to see, oh, that's what it looks like <laughs> right now. Nice, nice little sunset there. It's also nice to see the lazy ass uh, instructors sleeping as well when they're on the field. Yes, oh exactly. God, our instructors are getting a bad rap tonight here. No way. Eh? Well, you can also he's getting, change. He's getting his final licks in, Jim, before you know he becomes one of these lazy ass instructors. I was going right? to say, isn't he's he? He's only got whatever? days. Like the paperwork has been submitted. You know, in fact, he's probably already won now and just hasn't, <laughs> you know hasn't opened his mail. I have my camp bed picked out. <laughs> I, I think he's actually, you know, he's already an instructor and, and, you know, he just hasn't bothered to open his mail because he's too lazy ass. Oh, That's here it. you go. This, this will go back about two and a half days, yeah, every there, 10 minutes. There's the rain. That's rain, yeah. And you'll see snow in the winter. Um, beneath webcam is fairly important. I don't know how often you'll use it, but it's a list of flight vouchers that are currently out there that have been either redeemed or not redeemed. And this is something we need to talk about when we get to timekeeping, which I think we will have to put into a separate discussion. And, uh, and that's a good point, Tom. And just be aware, Dave, because you have extra permissions, you have more actions available to you than everybody else would have. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't, maybe, click, don't click on that. <laughs> uh, maybe just log in, log, log in as the other day quickly. Oh, now you're gonna make me work. Yeah, so this is where we check to see if somebody arrives with a voucher, whether they've flown before or not. And we've never had any problems or to check whether a voucher is valid. Sometimes we get around to looking at it, it sometimes it we don't. Oh, no, it didn't. No, David. <laughs> I know, I thought it might have saved it. I couldn't remember if I bothered to save it or not. Um, well, while David is doing that, um, mm -hmm. you know, that webcam is actually pretty cool. What happens if I, you know, on 
on the Monday, I, I make a booking to go uh, for a um, for in instructional lessons on the weekend. Saturday morning, I wake up to make sure that the everyone's going to come out. To it, but I suddenly see that it's uh, fogged over, like it's totally misted. This is then not the, what to fly. Then you come out because the fog will lift by ten o'clock. <laughs> you that's have that's to, a bad example. You it, have it, to figure the weather out in this place. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you look on, if you look on, you know, like the weather network or environment Canada or whatever, and the forecast is for rain and snow and locusts, and you look on the webcam and you see rain and snow and locusts, then you're probably safe to not come in. But yeah, if you look uh, on the webcam and it looks like this, that's flyable, come on out. Yeah, uh, but then the, um, um, then contacting the uh, various um, instructors, et cetera, et cetera, what happens in those cases? They just bail out themselves too, or do I have to actually make a point of call pulling them up and saying, hey, listen, guys, there's well, lightning going on right now and there's a tornado coming through. If only there was a place we could go to see who was planning to come out that day. <laughs> hmm. Oh, look, Thad's planning to come out. So, oh, oh, there, I can email Thad that. and check in with him and see what's happening. Okay. Um, just just a note on the pedestrian forecast. If it says there's a 30 or 40% chance of rain, that really means there's a 60 or 70% chance of a damn nice day. And unfortunately, we've coded ourselves to look at the negative and all our news presents the negative. We are negatively coded and we follow it. I have been out on that field and there have been three, four, five, six hours, five hours where you could do circuits and bumps, ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs, quite happily and not care about anything. And it'll be a perfectly good day and nobody's arrived. I, I remember one real good day when I was doing my student training. I think there was two people came out and we got, I think it was um, Malik, Ma Malik. We got seven, or oh no, eight flights in each um, that day because no one else turned up. And it was the ceilings were just enough to get some good flights in. The winds were calm. So you got to be really careful about uh, interpreting the weather. And just be aware that there's a space over to the left-hand side where you eventually, in the next couple of weeks, you'll see the trailers appearing there for club members. Just because they're not coming out, well, they're looking for different weather. Uh, club members are looking for, you know, weather that's going to give them four or five hour cross countries. That's not the weather you need to be uh, as a student. Question, Roger. Yep. Have we or anybody thought about putting a little weather part on our website? It's right there. Um, I just noticed Top Meteo, they've changed, they've gone and changed their, um, I, I, I noticed that a couple of days ago, they've gone and changed their API that I fetched the data with. They've gone and re rewrote it. Um, I may have to switch this. There's another, there's another weather forecasting that we can use. There's two that are open source. I may have to switch this to the other one. Right, okay. I mean, we could also put a weather station up. We used to have one, there's still one <laughs> attached to the, to the uh, windsock, but we don't have access to it. So if somebody wants to donate a wind station that'll hook to the web, we can do that. Anything's possible. But most of the time, look up in the sky, see what it's like, and you'll know you can come out. And, and I, I think it's a really good point, Roger, that different people have different objectives for their flying. So if you are a student looking for student flights, you know, on a day when it's overcast, but the ceiling is high enough to be flyable, so I know, I know we we're kind of joking around a little bit, but you know, when you get a day like this, assuming that that weather is high enough that we can run circuits, you know, again, talk to, talk to the people who are planning to come out and <clears throat> you know, if you can convince the folks to come out, we'll come out and then you can get some good sites in. And you know, Marco, to your question, you know, how much can, can I do multiple flights in a row if there's no one else there and the instructor and this co-pilot are willing and once we get on the field, we're usually very willing. It's usually just getting us onto the field that's the big issue. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Lastly, down there, uh, we've, well, we've do vouchers okay. first, and then you can do the searching. Okay. So there's there, there's vouchers that we spoke about, which is really just to check whether somebody arrives on the field has got the correct voucher. 
Um, it's very rarely done, but if things are in question or if somebody arrives and says, I had a voucher, but I lost it, you can go and see what's going on. So you can search by the person that purchased the voucher or who, it, who the recipient thereof is. So, for example, if you put in Jerry over there, you'd, you'd, you'd find just a, a couple of Jerry's as recipients because we don't have any Jerry's in the club. So there's a Jerry Tobian bought something for Fred. I can't read that. And Camille bought something for Jerry on the other side. And notice the status is outstanding at the side there. That means it hasn't been redeemed. If you clicked all the buttons in the status side there, you'll see every voucher that's ever been done at Great Lakes. As you can see on this view, you don't have the ability to delete them or do anything to them. You can just view them. So the ones that really are of importance to us are the outstanding ones. And then in addition with the mobile app, if someone turns up with a voucher, which is what they're supposed to do, you can scan the QR code on the voucher and make sure that they're not trying to use a voucher that they used the previous week. And also uh, David, David was hovering over the redeem function there. Thanks for that. Uh, you can redeem a voucher on the flight line on this page, as long as you have the number. So, uh, no, you can't. So, That's so, Okay, I spoke out of place over there. So, yeah, worry about that. That. I made a note. It's about so, so just want to be very clear on this. As a flight manager, as a field manager, I've got a guest who shows up, they've got their piece of paper, you know, the, the voucher, it's got a number on it. You know, you can go and check on the website if you've got any question. What do we do with that? But well, we don't go onto the website to do the redeem. We record it on the flight sheet and hand it in with the flight sheet, correct? Yes, we do okay. that and we, okay. and we draw two lines across it to void it. Okay. Yeah, but we could go on the site and, so, and check it at the same time. It would be so, better if we didn't because you could accidentally redeem somebody who didn't show up with oh, the wrong the, voucher and then... This is why Roger said the button is not there anymore. Yep. doesn't do anything. Good, mm. good. Okay. Yeah. So, so if you feel like you have to, you can check it if it feels fairly legit because I've honestly never gone and checked one. Um, or if someone shows up and it's like, oh, I can't find it, whatever. Um, the important thing, though, that I want to just emphasize as the field manager, as someone who's doing the timekeeping, you record it on the flight sheet yep. so that when we do our accounting and we see that, you know, Alan Mills took up this guy named Jerry and it was supposedly on a, on a you know, gift certificate. If you just scribble gift certificate, we have no way of connecting the dots. Right. So we need to be able to say, here's how this flight was paid for. Because yeah, otherwise, right. we end up billing Alan for it and he gets mad. And, and what has to be, be noted really is the serial number of the, of the voucher. Right. And the confirmation that his waiver <clears throat> was completed. Well, we're not on that part of it here. Okay. That, yeah. that, that, that's, that's yet an another piece of operation. <laughs> that's, an that's an important uh, thing, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's for different. That's that. Let's deal with that when we get to the, being actually on the field. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's have a look at pilot logs. And Roger, you speak about that. Was that's that that's your pride and joy at the moment? <laughs> yeah. This was new functionality that was added <laughs> over the winter, and essentially, it's there's two parts to this. Um. Oh, you set yours up, Dave. I'm. Well, no. I'm going to re-log in as. Some, someone okay. who actually has some flights. Okay. So this will, actually this part will be helpful to not just the new students, but to existing members as well, because I haven't really documented this or explained how it works. So um, from, from the get-go on this, any flights you fly will get moved to here and Roger will explain how, and yeah. also he'll explain how to import any old flights. Yeah. The idea behind the log pilot logs is if you are already a pilot, you know you have a pilot log book, your glider pilot log book. And this layout for the glider log book looks exactly like the log book that you fill in on paper uh, on a constant basis. So the idea was just to remove that load off you, uh, that it would do it automatically. So as flights are entered, 
uh, and appear in the my flights they will automatically be added into this um, uh, glider logbook as well and it will say the date pic passenger uh, if you're instructing it will of course if you are an instructor instructing a student two entries get put in one into your logbook and one into the student's logbook and that will happen automatically as flights are added mm. okay similarly if you are a tow pilot your powered logbook is updated and if you click on the powered logbook you'll see that there's different fields in there and if you are also a powered pilot you probably recognize those fields from a regular powered logbook as well Okay, and they'll automatically be entered. Now, if you want to, remember that you're, you may not do all your flying at Great Lakes. So click on the add log entry at the far right hand corner. The idea is you can just add in as many, and you can put one in day because we can always delete it. Um, you can put in your own flights. No, you can't do that. You have to pick from one of the ones in there. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, I'm I mean, sorry. You, 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 don't, you don't have horse. You don't have, you know, slope. Oh, you, you you off a cliff. Mo mo motor yeah. toe, please. Bungie. Motor toe. That's one to add, Roger, motor toe. That's self. <laughs> that would be damned interesting to stretch your legs that far. Well, uh, Foofy takes off by itself. Yeah, it's the I am talking about a motor launch, a car launch. Oh, a car launch. Yeah. Car winch. That's a good point. Yeah, I don't... Uh, Reverse I, pulley. I know I am going to put horse in there as well. <laughs> just, just for Dave. <laughs> uh, so I'll make up some times. Just put one in. And you can, those are in minutes. Yeah, it's a really long flight. <laughs> uh, the and then if you want yeah, to put now, a comment. Now, if I do this, will it add? Because I've actually got PIC time and dual time. That seems like it shouldn't work. Um, it would no. be one or the other, wouldn't it? Can, can you put whatever, you, you can put whatever you want in your paper logbook. Exactly. You can. This is not oh. check. This is not checking the calculations or your integrity. Yeah. So you can add that, and then close. You can do multiples if right. you want. So you can go bing, 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 and add them all in. Right. Yeah. And then you can edit it if you change your mind. Oh, and then darn! I I realized that was a mistake. I need to edit. And by the way, this How is useful. If you click on cell editing, no, close that. You can click on the cell editing. There's a little checkbox above. And now you can just click on the individual field. Oh, that's handy. So you don't have to go and... Um, yeah. And it gives you the totals at the bottom there. So one flight. That's the totals of what's showing on the screen. And then your overall totals for your entire logbook are in the bottom right corner. Because you may only be showing this year on this screen you may only be showing one year's worth right okay so that's pretty much going forward flights will automatically be added in yeah so i'm just going to highlight just just, just be here. before you before you drive that one just have a look under the source there's a user entry written under the source in the table above you so to the left the, that one yeah that, that will change if it's come from the the Great Lakes flight logs. It'll say something else. You can change anything that comes from there as well, if you like, and then it'll change to user entry. Yes. So if, if you've accepted it and it's the way it is, if we change something on so let, our end because we made a mistake, it'll <clears> reflect <throat> in here as well. Okay. So you've already put some flights in here, Dave. Mm -hmm. I was playing with it. Okay, good. Because now you can use this is for the um, for the season members. If you click on the create entries from flights, there's a button in the top right. Yeah. 
What I didn't want to do was to automatically add all the flights that have ever ha happened in the club and put them into your logbooks for a couple of reasons. One, I just don't want to take that sort of control and responsibility. Secondly, I don't know some of these flights, whether they were instructional, members, guests, I've got no idea because we don't record the purpose in the old system. The new stuff, we do record the purpose. So the idea what I gave in this screen was you can go through all your old flights since Great Lakes started recording flights on its website and you can go to each one and go to, let's go to the top one, unknown. You can just click, oh, that was an instructional flight. Or you can say it was a check flight. Okay, Jim? Now, choose instruction, because we can undo this. Jim, do you this. remember? Was this instruction or was this oh, a check Jim, flight? Jim remember. is PIC, so it's a check flight. Yeah. Has to be. Yeah. Okay. That's and so really now right. you just say create, go to the bottom, create log. Yep. Now it will disappear from the list. It won't appear again. Because I know that that flight has been added to your logbook. So if you click close, it will be there now in your logbook. And by the way, you can edit it. If you decide, oh no, it was uh, Jim's identical twin, John Miller, it you never can go happened. and edit it. But it just, never just, happened. Just, just notice that two flights went in there. There was already one there before. Yeah, no. there was already one there before. Yeah, there was. Yeah. Oh, OK. And it looks like it may have made a mistake. That's a good catch, though, because it hasn't put. Can you do me a favor? Click on search again. Did it not update the PIC, pop the, the times? Click on the oh, search button. There. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to look at that. It hasn't updated the PIC. With the time, there must have been times on the flight. Well, if I go back to create entries from flights, let's pick another one, Memora. That was you instructing. The that was you instructing. One, the so let's just one, add that one. There was something red in the top corner on the previous one. You're right, there was. It, was, it said missing yes. times. Yes, exactly. That's why it couldn't put the time in. Crazy. See, that one it did correctly. It put you in as an instructing and as PIC. 100% yeah, correct. Okay. All right. So, just Magic. before we go off of this for a moment, Roger, yeah, because I know you went through the logic on this when you when you built this. Yeah. When I go to here, I'm looking at the records of flights, and I can decide whether I bring them into my logbook or not. Yes. Right now, to do that, because I I played around with this a little bit to do this, if I try to choose a flight that has unknown, it says no, you can't do that. So I need yeah. to go through and I would need to say this was an instruction flight, this was yeah. a solo flight, et cetera, et cetera, right? You notice that when you do that, you don't have to, I, I did think this through, when you when you go through the, when you pick it in the chat box, so you pick it in the combo box from unknown, click on there again. I'm gonna use a flight from a long time ago. Okay. So that if I decide to delete these. Okay, okay. so Ian Collins. I'm as soon as you pick one, it will automatically select the chat box for you. Okay. So I, I'm going to say guest flight because that's not a member that we've ever had. So that was most likely a guest flight, right? Yeah. Right. So I can so I can go through and I can say, you know, guest flight, guest flight. Um, yeah. Ethan, that was a guest flight and a very enjoyable one, I might add. Um, and so on. Yes. Right. Sheena was one of my guests. She's a friend of mine. Actually, that was an instructional flight because she actually wanted to learn how to fly. Right. So I go through and do that. And then when I say create entries from selected flights, it puts it into, and I'm going to say, you sure you want to close this window? Yes. Um, it puts it into this here. And then yes. I can always add additional flights, as you just showed us, add an entry. Or, and, or edit one of the ones that you've added, yes. Or, or edit one. So if I, if I realize that, you know what, this was actually me checking out Jim and not the other way around, yep. I, I, would, I would update that appropriately. Yep. So now I have somewhere where I can actually keep my logbook. So instead of maintaining this this paper book, yes. right? Um, we have got that. And, and that is legal by Transport Canada because they just say you have to maintain a log. They do not say how you maintain it. And then you can export this as well into a CSV file, but it, now it looks like your logbook in terms of its columns. Mm -hmm. 
We might, might think about being able to print it out so that you can actually paste it into your logbook. Well, I'll let so, you well, figure out how to print from Excel. Yeah, just print from Excel. I mean, it's, it's right there. You've got it, right? Mm -hmm. But there's nothing in the regs that say it has to be a paper book. Yeah. It just says you must maintain a log. Right. Now, if something happens, you need to be able to produce that log. Yeah. Right. So if, if Roger goes and does something silly again in, and transport comes around and says, okay, what flying has this dude done? You know, Roger's going to say, well, here's my log book. Here's my official record. Right. And if, if he took that with him, and we need to, we will actually go on to our accounting system and say, here's, here's what we know of Roger's been doing. Yep. So there's actually a, a, a nice addition to all of this. Now, now the, on, when, the only part of that I will say is, legally speaking, you can edit your own flights. They don't, you know, how accurate is it? It's up to you. I can't edit your logbook, by the way. Well, I can because I'm, I know the database under the covers. Um, but there's no screen for me to edit your logbook. Only you can edit your logbook as you, when you're logged on. Okay. Um, and and this is separate from the billing. This is separate from yeah, if I no go book. to my flights. Yeah. Right. So if I go back to 2012, because that's when all of this, sorry, 2011, actually, um, that's when, you know, all of this kind of started. And I'll go to February. And we'll say the 10th, there we go. And if I search those original flights way back when are still there. So and they, and they have errors in them, which is why that one with Jim didn't import properly. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so the data is still kept on the, on the site, but you have a place to manage whether it's there, you can copy it into your logbook and then those two are separate lists. And then the logbook is now yours to maintain. Yeah, and there's different information here. Like, we don't care about the cost in your log, but we don't care about the time that you yeah. took off and landed. Yeah. Because um, you don't have spaces for those in your logbook today. Okay. Now, eventually, just, just a heads up, the goal with this as well, I just didn't have time this, this, this winter, is yeah. aircraft logbooks is next as well. So that you it will automatically produce all your aircraft logbooks. Um, so you won't have to be writing them into your well, it's up to you what you do with it, but it'll be it'll look like your journey log that you keep for your individual aircrafts. Okay. Now we have been going an hour and a half, which is a oh, long time. So we should either take a break or call it a night. I'm gonna vote we call it a night and we do another session around let's let's actually be on the field so we now know how to set up our profile we now know how to do the appropriate tests and things that we need to do ahead of the flying season we know how to sign up so that we can uh, sign ourselves up as a student as a field manager fill those positions see what events are coming down the pike and see what flights i've done so that we've got a pretty good picture of what's going on yeah I second that motion. All, All in right. favor? Yeah. Motion. Let's, call, let's sure. call it a night. So, um, is Scott Good still session. on the line with us? I'm not seeing his video. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's call it a night here. Thank you, everyone, so much. Scott is here. Yeah, he's hiding on us. Um, Let's call it a night. Thank you all so much. We're going to take the video of this. We're going to upload it to our YouTube channel for anyone who missed it or if there's something you want to review. But I'm going to ask you all, please log into the website, go and update your information, do your, your tests that are needed so that we have all this out of the way. And then when we actually can get on the field and it's dried up and ready to go, that we've got you know some more things done and ready and we can start progressing. Sounds awesome. good. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Perfect. So we'll set Thank one you. up probably right. for next right. Thursday and we'll deal with um, timekeeping and the field issues, etc. Yep. Excellent. Good night. Good night. Thank, Good night. Thank, Thank you very much. Hey guys. Thank you. Okay. And if Scott is there, there he is. You're hiding on the other screen. Can you uh, hit the stop record, Scott? How do I get out of this? Click leave. Should be in the bottom right corner. It's actually in the top right. 
Mine's bottom right. Mine's bye bottom bye. right. You're upside down. Ciao. Scott. Scott, Scott. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off.